people are not as empathetic about her situation than if it was anybody else. And I think it's because she just had that little arrogance to her. And I think being confident is a good thing. But every once in a while, we kind of need to stop and be humble a little bit. Because you just never know how things are going to turn out. Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Alexis and on this channel I cover viral topics. I write down important lessons that I learned from viral topics or public figures and just everyday life in general. And I speak my truth on camera and share it with you all. Today I want to talk about Wendy Williams and everything that she's been going through lately. And I would say for like the past few years, uh, she's been on the decline for years now so me personally i'm somebody who cannot get over wendy williams watching her topics was one thing that i was looking forward to every day of the week from monday to friday and um wendy williams is somebody who i couldn't stay upset with for too long like she would do and say some problematic things on her show sometimes but within 24 hours i would just get over it and yeah i really really liked her it's just very sad to see how she's going out. So a documentary came out about her this year, which I am not going to watch because I saw the trailer and I really didn't like the way she was being presented. The Washington Post recently came out with an article about Wendy stating that she has a form of dementia called aphasia and frontotemporal dementia. According to aphasia.org, aphasia is a result of a stroke or brain injury and affects a person's ability to communicate. It doesn't really stop you from functioning as a proper adult, but it just kind of affects the way you communicate. According to johnhopkins.org, frontotemporal dementia is defined as a group of disorders that occur when a nerve cell in the frontal and temporal lobes of the brain are lost. And that causes the lobes to shrink. Frontotemporal dementia, also known as FTD, can affect behavior, personality, language, and movement. This happens to adults between the ages of 40 and 65, even though th that can happen to somebody who's younger. There is not really a known cause of FTD or frontotemporal dementia. Researchers have linked certain subtypes of FTD to mutations of several genes. And uh, according to hopkinsmedicine.org also it says there's no current treatment for frontotemporal dementia somebody living with this kind of dementia has about six to eight years to live if you're familiar with wendy you know that she went through a really hurtful divorce from her ex-husband kevin or calvin i don't even know what his actual name is sometimes people call him kevin some people call him kelvin i don't know but either way, she went through a public divorce because her ex-husband had an affair and ended up starting a family with the mistress. I believe he even went ahead and married the mistress, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, people believe that that's what actually caused her to fall into a really big depression. That led to her having this illness. Either way, I just came here to talk about a few things that I've learned from Wendy, just seeing her going through what she's going through. So with number one, I want to go ahead and say, be careful what you put into your body. So this point right here actually comes from a few YouTubers that I've heard talk about Wendy in the past. The fact that she had breast implants placed at a very early stage of her career. From what I'm hearing from people who have had plastic surgery, People have to constantly go to the doctors to have things replaced, to have those kind of chemicals in your body. It can actually have other effects that we don't even know of. If it's true that she has had surgical procedures and she hasn't been taking care of herself and she hasn't been going to the doctors to kind of look into those surgical procedures, I think she really needs to. 
I hope it's not too late now since she doesn't function properly. If that's the case, then I hope this is something that's easily reversible. I think this is something that people who are currently having plastic surgery really need to look into. If there is a possibility that plastic surgery can affect your health this much, then I think people really need to take decisions to have plastic surgery more seriously than they do. It's not just something that you do to look better. Like people really need to invest more in doing research. If I was the type of person to get plastic surgery, I would make sure that I have somebody to look up to, to know how plastic surgery is going to affect me 10, 20, 25 years, 30 years down the line after I get my procedure. For my next point, I wrote that we always need to be grateful for what we have. And I'm only saying this because once upon a time, it seemed like Wendy was really on top of the world and she had it all, you know, she had her son, she had a marriage that wasn't healthy, but at the time looking at it from the outside, her marriage seemed very, very healthy and solid. She had her career, she had the money and she had it all. She's not somebody who was humble and grateful. I'm not saying that that's the reason why she ended up where she's right now, but people are not as empathetic about her situation than if it was anybody else. And I think it's because she just had that little arrogance to her. And I think being confident is a good thing, but every once in a while, we kind of need to stop and be humble a little bit because you just never know how things are going to turn out. My next point is making more money than your husband would always backfire. Wendy Williams, among so many other women, I would say Sherry Shepard as well, or just taught me that you shouldn't invest so much in a man you're doing better than financially because it backfires. It backfires when he starts to feel emasculated and feel the need to go find a woman who's beneath him and beneath you in different ways to kind of boost up his ego. And I think that's what Kevin or Kelvin did. And um, that ended up hurting her because even though she was making more money, she was still very much emotionally dependent on him. And he didn't care about that because it seemed like his ego was just bruised. I think for a lot of successful women, the option is maybe to be single like Oprah. You know, because I mean, Oprah, people can say whatever they want about her, but she's not going through all of this. She didn't really let any man handle anything for her. She has a little boyfriend, you know, the rumors that she actually swings the other way as well, allegedly. I don't know about that, but either way, nobody's handling her wealth. Nobody has control over her like Kevin had control over Wendy. My next point is that a lot of people want to be successful, but I really don't know if people consider how lonely it is at the top i haven't watched the documentary but from what i've heard a lot of people say is that they don't think the people in the documentary meaning her family and her friends who showed up in the documentary has her best interests at heart and it's very hard for successful and especially very rich people to find other people who love them and care for them for real because how do you just forget that somebody who you're dealing with is a millionaire? Now, some people are not impressed by money and some people don't care. But when you are a wealthy, successful person, it's very hard to find someone you can trust. Because should be told is that people who don't really care about your money might not even make time to entertain you or approach you because they really just don't care. A lot of people who might approach you might be people who care about your success and wealth. And um, I think people don't always consider how stressful it can be the more successful you get. And we really need to consider what we want. Like you really need to watch out for what you are asking for when you are praying to be successful. Me personally, I think a good balance of everything is okay. A good balance of money, love, friendship is great. But somebody like Wendy Williams achieved a level of success that most of us will never. We really have to 
think about what we want when we pray for success and money and fame and wealth, etc. Like, do we really want it? Like, do we really want it? The next point that I have is that I think we all need to raise our kids to be independent. I'm only saying this because before the documentary came out, I think there was a rumor that her son, Kelvin Jr., was spending like a lot of money on rent and Uber Eats and things like that. And I've seen some of his interviews. The boy comes across to me a little bit like a mama's boy. Like he's been very cuddled and taken care of his whole life. And even Wendy Williams herself, for somebody to stay in a relationship with somebody who's openly cheating on you and defend him as much as she tried to defend him when she was still on the show, Wendy comes across to me as somebody who cuddles men. And she comes across to me as um, a little bit of a pick me a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. And the way I look at her, she seems to me as a mom who would cuddle her sons. And she doesn't seem like somebody who's going to raise her son to be able to take care of her when he gets older and when she gets too old to do so. Now, I've been seeing all the videos about parenting and how people are saying that your kids are not supposed to be here to take care of you. But when a child loves your parent, they would want to go back and take care of them. Clearly, I believe that Kelvin Jr. loves his mom. He just isn't strong enough and doesn't have enough of a backbone to take care of her the way she needs to be taken care of, in my opinion. I think that's one of the reasons why a conservatorship was applied to Wendy. Two people who work for the bank handling Wendy's money because it was determined that the people around her were unable to do so. Maybe the bank is not doing right by Wendy by this conservatorship. Maybe her son have shown the bank that he was mature enough to do so, but they still just don't care. Maybe they have their own motives. We never know. But based on the interviews that I've seen, based on the fact that even after his mom was kicked off the air, he was still living in his apartment that was thousands of dollars a month. Just based on that, like if you know your source of income is unable to help you out financially, you have to downsize. And it doesn't seem like any of these people cared enough about Wendy to even downsize. And her money wasn't coming in, but her money was flying out very quickly. Please raise your children to be independent, even if you have the money for them to just sit down and do nothing. The next point that I took from this entire thing is, I think Wendy should have invested a little more in spiritual protection. Now, I'm not one of those people who is very educated on like magic or like black magic or anything like that. But I know when people attain a level of success and wealth as Wendy Williams, especially the way in which she attained that wealth, nobody has to necessarily go after you in any way, shape or form. It's just when you have a platform that you use to make people as mad as she has been making people mad over the years, it's just way too many angry, negative energy that are fixated onto you. I wish somebody like her had taken spiritual protection a little more seriously. I don't know what she was doing behind closed doors to make sure that on a spiritual level, she was doing okay. I really think she should have invested more into just spiritual healing, spiritual bath and things like that. If she wasn't already, she had a lot of people in your feelings. And when you are in this kind of position, you need to invest in not just physical protection, like, you know, security bodyguards, etc. You need to really much invest in uh, protecting yourself against energies, outside forces and any spiritual energy that's coming your way. For anybody who's trying to get to this level of success, you would have to invest in spiritual protection. You would have to. 
because we live in a very spiritual world and it's a spiritual warfare right now. Next, I try to do some research on how to prepare for situations like dementia before it gets here. I couldn't find anything that confirmed that someone can actually go to court and get themselves a conservator in case there is an illness. So with this whole Wendy situation, I feel like if I was getting as successful as she is, I would try to get a conservator before I get sick. So I would just prepare for the worst, pretty much. I'm wondering if there's a way to go to the courts and pretty much plan ahead of time and ask them to assign somebody specific, just have control over who's going to be your conservator. Just like you get to plan for a will. I'm wondering if there's a way to also sign proper documents with the courts, actually telling them how to handle your finances in case of dementia or sickness or something like that. Because it seems like she really doesn't have any control over who's handling her finances now. And that is not fair. So, not trying to be insensitive. But is there a way to plan ahead of time? Is there a way to get control over a situation that hasn't happened yet? Is there a way to go to the courts when you are starting to make a whole lot of money? And try to figure out if you can be the one to appoint who's going to be your conservator in case things go left. Next, I would say, I believe that romantic partners should only have limited access and control to someone's finances and money and wealth. When it comes to money and family, things can go less pretty quickly because emotions are involved. I think her husband had way too much control over her career and her money. I think if she had given him less control over everything, things might not have ended up as badly. I think her mental health would have took a hit, but her ex-husband didn't just leave her for another woman. He was also working for the Wendy Williams show and he was her manager. And when all of this went down, he pretty much took the business down with him. I don't think it's a good idea to have your husband or romantic partner have that much control over your career and your finances because if he or she decides to drop you, they're taking everything with them. If your partner is the main force behind your business, and things don't work out, they're taking all of that with them. Now that I'm looking at her story from the outside, I don't think if I was a Wendy Williams, I would want my husband to have this much control over the business. Her entire brand was attached to her husband, and as he left, he pretty much let it all crumble. So we need to tread lightly when we let boyfriends, husbands, romantic partners take that much control over what we're doing like as a business our corporation our brand like because we never know especially considering the fact that marriage at least in the u.s lasts for an average of eight years eight to ten years so yeah this doesn't make me want to have romantic partners handle anything for me we can be in a romantic relationship but when it comes to business i think i'm just gonna need everybody to have their own space and lane absolutely voila we have made it to the end of this video thank you so much for watching please go ahead and like subscribe why not it's free i'll catch you guys next time bye